Hello, my name is Simone and I'm the owner of Gaius Crystals Gifts and today we're going to teach you to wire wrap. And this is a picture of the piece that we'll be making today. Start by cutting three pieces 12 inches long of 20 inch gauge round wire. In this step, I'm just straightening out my wires with my nylon pliers and then connecting them in the center with the 24 inch gauge wire that we cut earlier. You want to just take your time, make sure the pieces are together, and that it's fairly snug, but you don't have to go crazy making it super tight. And then here I'm just measuring each side to make sure they're about the same. When you're happy with the placement, you can go ahead and clamp it down a little bit. After that, use your flush cutter to snip off the tails and make sure you snip them off on the same side. Go ahead and grab one of your pliers and clamp it down. I'm just measuring it again to make sure because at this point you can still kind of slide the connection around to get an even measurement on both sides. Next you'll want to bend it to the shape a little bit of the cabotone that you'll be wrapping. And you want to make sure that the snippets that you snipped earlier are on the inside of it. This way, when you do this, it'll be hidden by the stone. Just carefully apply pressure and try to keep that weaved connection point in the center and then pinch the tops together. You can tweak it a little bit here and there to make it look the way you want it to look. But when you're happy, grab one of your pliers, make sure you're centered up, and clamp all of the wires together, and this will create your bail. To make sure we don't mix up our wires, we want to make sure that all the wires on the right side are kind of pointing to the right, and all the wires on the left side are pointing to the left. And this will make sure that it's a little bit easier when you have to grab your wires and do wire work a little bit later. Once that's complete, you can grab your 26 gauge wire that is two feet long. That's what I'm doing right here. Carefully bring your wires together. Bring the shorter tip and use the shorter tip to wrap downwards. You also want to make sure that your wires stay aligned. When you have your loose connection, you can go ahead and grab the back two wires and push those off to the side. And you want to do that on both the left side and the right side. You should end up with just two wires from each side waiting for you in the front to create the bail. Remember that 26 gauge two feet wire? We're going to now use the rest of that long tail that we left to wrap a bail all the way up these two wires. I ended up stopping mine at about an inch and a quarter. Now fit your stone and make sure everything is looking good. For the next step, you want to make sure that the bale is at the front and that the remaining wires are at the back, just like this. Grab the back two wires and carefully separate them a little from the front wire. You'll want to do this on both sides and it'll make the next step a lot easier. On a flat surface, fit your stone into it. Use your flat nose pliers to then wiggle in between the first top wire and the bottom two wires to create a little bit of a bend, just like this. You want to hold the top down and you want to do it to both sides. Later, you can play with this and make the top area come out a little bit more, but for now, just hold it down. You could tweak it later.
You should end up with something like this. And now we have a way that the stone is being held from the front. But we still need to find a way to hold it from the back. And this is where our bale is going to come very useful for us. Using some pliers, bend your bale forward just a little bit. I did it a little bit a lot. You don't need to do it that much. <laughs> then use something small and round. This is about six millimeter round to bend your bale over and create something for your chain to go through. Use your pliers again to create another bend right here where the bale wires are kind of sticking out at an angle. This will create tension that we really need to hold the cab in. Once in place, you should still have the tail from our 26 gauge to connect it all together. So wrap it around the entire thing, the front and the back, and this will keep your little loop in place for your chain. When you have at least three, four, or five loops connecting the bale all together, you want to then wrap that 26 gauge wire right around these back two bale wires and only these back two bale wires. This will help lock the bale into place. So do about two loops around both of those wires. After that, do one or two loops around with just one wire of your choice and this will lock it in. Slide your cab back in, press it down firm and make sure it's really sitting in there. Then bend the wires as you see I have them here. You want to make sure to bend it close to the edge and this will help keep the edges of your pendant secure so that the cab doesn't slide out. So get as close to the edge on both sides and then bend it in. When you have something like this, go ahead and make a bend near the center and curve it outwards. This will create a little loop. Go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Here you see I was able to just kind of curve it without having to bend it first. Next we're gonna feed some 28 gauge wire, just a little bit, two of them on each side of this bottom connection. You'll wanna feed it in through there and then start to connect it and loop it through your tiny little loop that you made right here. This will hold down that wire to that side of the connection. You'll need to do this on both sides with both wires. To lock it in, you also wanna make sure you wrap it a couple of times around one wire. Once it's secure, you can create a little bend with the tail of the wire and bend it inwards. Clip off the excess. I also clipped off the excess tails from the bale. Quick run through of me securing the other side. Here you can see the two wires that we added on either side of our connection to connect the two wires in the back from the bale. And here I'm finally curling off that final bale tail that will help lock our stone into place. And you just kind of make it look like the other side. It doesn't have to be super symmetrical. Here I'm just using my thin nose pliers to make sure that the clipped edges are secure and tucked in. At this point, you could take a look at everything, tweak some things here and there, make sure everything is looking the way you want it to look.
Now we have these excess wires that we can do designs with. Separate the front and back wires so that you can easily work with them. Now we're going to grab our long 28 gauge wire. We're going to use this to create a coil around this back round wire. When you get to about this point, you can easily start to coil by just spinning the pendant in place and holding your finger in place like this. Now we're gonna begin our accents. Follow the direction of my finger. You want to take your front wire and you wanna curve it up and around. You can use your pointer finger to try to help keep that loop in place that you want. Don't be afraid to tweak it to make sure you're happy with it. When you are happy with it, continue around with the second loop. Now grab your coiled wire and continue a loop around that one. And just like that, you have this cute little accent. Hold down your accent and wrap the tail of the two wires around your entire bale like this. This will help to secure your design and keep everything in place. I didn't coil my wire enough, so all I'm doing right now is continuing to coil on that wire so that the coil design can continue when I continue wrapping this around the front. Now that I've extended my coiled piece, I can continue the accent. Grab those same two wires we've been working with and wrap them again around the front. Remember to hold down those bail loops when you do this. Clip off your remaining tails, but try to gauge it so that you leave just enough there for you to loop around and lock it in the back. As you can see, you really don't need that much to do it. To do mine, I like to grab the very tip and I like to curl it in just a little bit. I tried to curl and guide it into that little area on the side. And when it gets in there, you can go ahead and clamp it down a little tighter and also do it to the other wire because you gotta do it to both of those wires back there. So you create a little curl and you guide it into that, that little hole you have there and you clamp it down. Now we're left with just these two wires. If you don't want to continue any further, you could stop right here and then find some place to lock these off in the back. But since they're here, we're going to go ahead and do something with them. I took the front wire and I created a little side accent curl on the side of the loops that we already have. And then I did the same with the second wire that was behind that. Rinse and repeat the process by holding down your accent and curving the wires to the back. And at the back is where we're going to find a good area to clip them and curl them to lock them. This part may take some practice and getting used to learning how to curl the tip and get it under your wire and then carefully use your pliers to kind of add pressure and force to it so that there's tension there to keep it in place. I didn't speed these parts of the videos up specifically so that you can get every chance to see how I'm doing this. And just like that, once you're done tweaking and clamping and securing, you are completely finished and have your pendant.